For Criminal Media Policy, I'm Sane Zamini, Director at the South African Informal Traders Alliance, Paul Bester, is in conversation with Polity about SONA 2022. So, Paul, your organization at the South African Informal Traders Alliance pleaded with government before the State of the Nation address to recognize its members as critical role players in resuscitating the economy. It looks like your plea didn't fall on deaf ears because now we know that President Ramaphosa announced that the legislation is being reviewed to reduce a red tape and regulatory burdens on the informal sector. The president on the State of the Nation address indicated that he is forming a new team that's going to look at the red tape. We firstly wanted to say to the President, thank you for doing that. We hope that this new panel and and, and team don't become another red tape event for, you know, looking at red tape, so to speak. But being that, that being as it may, we are quite happy that the President recognized that the economy needs to be revived and it needs to be revived urgently. We are of the opinion that the informal sector, as we are knowing currently, is one of the biggest contributors to the economy as we know it. Currently, and this has been, you know, due to a, a, a investigations that is done, the informal sector is 15% of the GDP of the country comes from the informal sector. This is quite a big, large number. And we want the president to know that, you know, issues like permits, business licenses, this kind of a thing really does take effect on the informal sector and we need to grow the business and we need to grow it fast. One of the main issues that happened during the lockdown and COVID was the TERS, the Temporary Employment uh, Remuneration Scheme. The informal sector with its more than 4 million members was excluded. And so the fact that some of our members needed to go on the streets and do what they needed to do to put food on the table is quite a big impact that that we feel it had on the economy of the country. So, uh, you know, when these things come to Parliament and to SONA to say, let's look at the informal sector, and the president specifically made mention of a of a, a incident where a lady was arrested and thrown into the in a van and the property was confiscated. This was one of our Saida members actually, and we had a big fight with the uh, with the JPMD at that time uh, when when this happened. Mm-hmm. We say, look, she's selling stuff. She's not stealing. There's no crime, no. Uh, but yet they thought that prudent the fact that she had no permit to be arrested. And these are the kind of things that we would like the panel and the president to look at going forward. And your members, I understand, have for the longest time been subjected to harassment, like you've just alluded now. Can you highlight some of the barriers and problems that your members experience out in the streets as they are trying to provide for their families? Okay, so first and foremost, Saita must be, you know, straightforward from the beginning. We're not an organization that that worked and, and moves on illegal traders and illegal actions. We don't condone it and we don't believe in that. We believe that each trader should be having a permit and that he or she should be recognized in the municipality that he or she works in. And that's fine. No problem with that. The issue is here is, for instance, you will remember the president in last year, it was September, he made a, uh, there was a, a, a government cassette signed, an instruction okay, given that all permits cost will be waived. From the beginning of 2020, March 2020, till the December of 2022, which gives them about two and a half years of free trading, if you want to call it. If you have a permit and you haven't paid it, it's not a problem. The payment cost has been waived by the president. Yet municipality still goes around with the metro police and the city police going down and harass, arrest and write fines. It's from province to province, from municipality to municipality, each and every one of them as a different bylaw that governs uh, informal traders. We have a problem with some of these bylaws because bylaws are supposed to be written to the people that it protects. But bylaws now prohibits some of our traders to go out and trade because of certain bylaws, which means those bylaws are not written to the, to the benefit of the members that it seeks to protect. And it also the second part is that it, it, it's a worrying fact that municipalities still go out and confiscate stuff for people that have no permits. It means two things. Either they don't know their work, or secondly, the president's signing of a government gazette means nothing to certain leaders. We have a problem with it. And we say, say, it can't be a workshop. We are not a workshop to tell municipalities what the president said and how it must be implemented. They should tell us. Over and above, 
the, the, the age-old issue of gender-based violence. They think they can lead our women around and just break stuff in property. I have a problem with that. It's treat people with dignity. But I don't think that people understand that our women are subjected to huge sexual, you know, sexual advances, sexual exploitation. This exploitation as a human being because they are women. And 90% of all informal traders are women to put food on the table for the family. So that's one of the big issues that we have is that municipalities just do not understand the rules and the regulations and government gazette issues signed by the president and, it's, and, and they don't honor them. And we know now that chairperson of the Small Business Institute, uh, Mr. Sipong Kossi, has been now appointed to head up a team in the presidency to help cut the red tape across government. What is your comment on, on this appointment? We are happy that the president and in the presidency are going to be doing this, looking at red tape, looking how to streamline processes for people to trade, informal traders. But not just the informal traders, small business, SSMEs in general, to build the economy. The economy needs to be built by these people. This is what we need. Our people need to be on the ground. They need to be allowed to earn an income and to make sure that the economy is built again. One of the biggest opportunities that the president said and this is what we want to talk to, to the president about this. He says, government is not responsible for creating jobs. As Sahita, we have been saying this for five years. The government cannot create jobs. What government must do is create fertile ground so that there can be investment and companies can grow. That's what government must do. However, we are very weary and we want to warn president to not compromise our labor laws because that is very important. We are saying this, first and foremost, the labor laws and the employment equity, these kind of laws that is there cannot be touched. But create fertile ground, you know, take away red tape and issues so that business can flourish. Tahita has had a project that we launched in the end of last year to say we want to create a million jobs by the end of 2023, our million jobs uh, creation program or, or project. It's actually very easy. There are currently just over 4 million informal traders in South Africa. Every time there's job losses and an a, 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 a issue like the COVID comes and people lose their jobs, how does these people look after themselves and create income? I understand, say, and I always say this tongue-in-cheek, 10% will be living a life of crime, but the other 90% will become informal traders. So currently, actually, the informal trading is the biggest job creation entity in South Africa, as we see it. So what we say to the, to, to the president is allow us to build traders so that traders can start to trade, take away the red tape permit systems, all these other regulated issues that prohibit small traders and small business to trade so that they can create jobs. If you allow that and people can start to trade and be open and free, it would be easy to create another one million one and a half million jobs within a year. But then the presidency and the minister in the presidency needs to come to the party to relax these regulations permit costs so that traders can. So to answer your question with a long discussion, yes, we are very, very happy that it's gone to the office of the presidency. I've made contact directly with Minister Mondri Kukubane. He's willing to talk to us and we are going to take that opportunity and be part of the solution as opposed to complaining and being part of the problem. Do you also think that it's fair that the municipalities themselves are also invited to the table to make sure that what is being implemented at government level also falls through to the municipalities so that your members especially will not be affected? Extremely important that in the economic development offices, the tech, they call them the tech offices, and offices are integral part of this discussion. Because they are the ones that must show the political world will to assist traders to actually become active again. And, and that's very important for us that, yes, we indeed believe, even if it's just a contingent of employment or, or economic development offices that comes to these meetings, but they need to be represented. Because we can work till we are blue in the face and we've got no fingers left with the minister. As soon as that legislation is signed and the municipalities has no political will to implement it, it's work done for nothing. So yes, very much important that they are part of it.
And lastly, can you explain what those now who wish to be members of SITA must do to join and what benefits will they enjoy in return? SAHITA is the South African Informal Traders Alliance. We are the biggest informal trader organization in South Africa. Our members is across South Africa and we have a national footprint with an office in each province. What is the benefit of joining SAHITA? Yes. So as much as it is Kosatu, so is Saita for the for the unemployed, own, unemployed people, the same with Kosatu. When you join us, we have give you access to all the funding possibilities that we have through the CIDA, through the CFR, through IDC, you know. We have legal representation that assist you with with drawing up your business plans, your tax. These are the things that we have. And we also have individual pro, uh, benefits that we have signed up with a company which gives you legal protection you know you can have a legal we give you funeral policies we even have something like a shack insurance but also be part of a united and an organized organization that gives you access to the to, to all the government rollout i don't know if you saw what we did in december with the idc we helped 80 traders in Gauteng, 80 traders in Natal, who was the most affected in the looting We've, through our project, we could supply each one of the 25,000 rand cash to buy new stock. We help them with one of these yoga machines, as well as the as an access and administration of APSA business accounts. So to assist them to become from the informal to formal, this is not a, these are the kind of things that Sahita does. How do you become a member of Sahita? It's quite easy. You pop an email to membership at sahita.org.za or you send a WhatsApp to 061-547-5879. So it's 061-547-5879 or the email say membership at sahita.org.za and we'll get the hold of you. Our members our team will get hold of you, send you your application form and you can become part of this awesome organization. That was Paul Fester from the South African Informal Traders Alliance discussing SONA 2022.